Got another one of the trout trick swarm guys. We're working some uh, some structure here. That fish was shallow. We're kind of coming into this little bay. Everything's everything's going well. What do you want? Just bring him right to me. Okay. I'm ready. You ready? I got 11 feet of net here. He's got a mouthful of bubble gum. Does. Bubble gum, huh? Fuck. And, uh, we, we, <laughs> we, wow. Sorry, I got blood everywhere, guys. I was we trying had, to take a picture of him. <laughs> we had, on the trout big. tricks worm right there, just like that. Crab dinner. Sorry, Lucy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. Welcome back to the channel. And uh, if you're not already a subscriber, if you like this content, please hit the subscribe button and that bell notification. You'll always know when I'm here on YouTube talking about fishing tactics. And that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. Um, I've started my fall trout guiding season and that means I'm out on the water a lot, making observations. And I'm also meeting a lot of people, a lot of people out on the lake. Some of them are my clients, some of them are my friends, some of them are just people that come over the boat or come up to me on the dock and wanna say hi. And, Maybe they have questions. So I like to pass those observations and questions on to you guys in hopes of making you better anglers and that's gonna enable you to catch more and bigger trout throughout the season, throughout your fishing career. And that's our goal here in the Fish Hunt Shoot Productions channel to enable you to catch more and bigger trout. So let's get into it. Today, we are gonna talk about trout fishing hooks. Now, there's a lot of hooks used for trout fishing, but I'm gonna talk about some basics and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do some, some definitions um, in relation to hooks. We're gonna talk about some of the parts of various hooks and, and the attributes, and then we're gonna get into the specific hooks that I like to use when I'm out on the water trout fishing. So let me zoom in on this diagram, even though I got it a little bit wet. It's been raining here, it's a little blustery out in the foothills. But uh, we'll zoom in on this, I'll point out some details about hooks in general, and then we'll get into the specifics. <clears throat> Okay, I think you can see that diagram pretty well, and I'm gonna use my, my folding fillet knife for a pointer here. So, as you can see, we're gonna be talking about hook basics. We're gonna be talking about the basic parts of the hook. So, let's start with the eye. Here's the eye of the hook. Um, that's where your line attaches. Typically, on a, on a fishing hook, the eye is either turned down, turned up, or it's in line with the shank. This section here is the shank. Shanks on various types of hooks, vary in length, okay? But that is the shank, the back portion of the hook that leads off of the eye. Next, we come to the bend. Go around the bend, we come to the point and the barb right here. And the distance between the point of the hook and the shank, that is referred to as the bite of the hook. So let's talk a little more about that. I'm gonna switch to my other camera and then we'll talk about some specific hook types. Okay, so those are the basic parts of a fishing hook. Um, one of the things I didn't mention when we were looking at the diagram is that hooks are made with uh, wire that varies in thickness. Some hooks are extra strong, like a guy that's out throwing, you know, frogs for black bass. Those hooks are very stout wire. They're tempered um, really well. They're expensive hooks. They're thick, they're strong because he's gonna be setting the hook with you know heavy tackle probably using braided line and that hook is going to be under a lot of stress on the hook set so it requires a heavier wire hook contrast that with a steelhead hook or a a drop shotting hook something that you want penetration on right away you're going to be using fairly light tackle so those hooks are typically made with thin wire and uh, you know a thin wire hook is going to allow your bait to to act more naturally in the water these days, modern technology, we have a ton of great hooks, you know, available. Um, of course, we have the high-end stuff, the owners, stuff like that. But, you know, your Eagle Claw, Laser Sharp, your Mustads, um, they are top-notch hooks now. It's just, you know, technology marches on and uh, really all the hooks are, are, are really good. Eye position. Let me get into the hooks. Let me grab the hooks here. So, I've got one of my foam uh, leader holders right here and I have four hooks on here and I'm going to talk about four different types of hooks today. So let's get into it. This is a hook that gets a lot of questions from folks. This is the Mustad 
slow death hook, okay? So there's the bend and the barb in that hook. You can see it's, it's, it's pretty fine wire. And up here, here's the eye. And uh, you can see that that eye is in line with the shank. Whenever the hook eye is in line with the shank, we call that a ring eye hook. So the eye is in line with the shank. The thing that's unique about this hook, it's very fine wire, it weighs very little, is that bend right there. That bend, if you put a piece of night crawler or a plastic grub or a leech or whatever on this hook and troll it through the water, it's gonna cause that bait to rotate. It's very important when you're pulling worms, when you're pulling some, some plastics, when you're pulling things like leeches. This was originally a walleye hook, but uh, it has great applications for trout anglers and uh, we use the heck of them when we're out trolling, when we're finesse trolling, when we're pulling worms, soft plastic, stuff like that. But that is your Mustad Slow Death Hook comes in number one and number two sizes that's it you can get them in bronze you can get them in black chrome or you can get them in red i like the red ones so that's what we run with so that's your slow death hook from mustad now here's a very common hook this is the hook we probably all grew up using um i don't use them a lot anymore in fact i had to do a little searching in the garage to find this hook that is your basic bait holder hook um, you'll notice the bait holder, it has a turned down eye. It has some barbs on the shank for holding the bait in place. Down here, pretty standard. It's got the point, the bend, the barb. But what you'll notice here is that that point is a little offset from the shank. It's kicked out a little bit. It's because this is intended to fish bait. When the fish gets the bait in its mouth, if you should set the hook with that hook, you know, sideways or I guess parallel to the mouth, that hook is gonna dig into the fish's mouth and you're gonna get a good hook set. The eye is turned down so you can wrap the line around the shank when you make your snell knot. And uh, when you set the hook, you're gonna get a direct line of pull with the shank of the hook. So that's a bait holder. I don't use those a whole lot, especially when I'm lake fishing. Um, I use them mostly if I'm using night crawlers, if I'm like steel fishing or if I'm fishing night crawlers in a stream or something like crickets, something like that. They're useful for that, but beyond that, I don't use them a whole lot. Now here's the hook that I use when I'm bait fishing and it's small. It's what I use for power bait fishing and stuff like that. This is an octopus hook, okay? It has all the components that we, we talked about when we looked at the chart. It has a shank, a bend, a point, a barb. The eye, the eye is upturned, okay? Why is the eye upturned? Well, I'll tell you why. The eye is upturned to maximize the bite, okay? In general, the larger the bite of a hook, the better it's gonna hold fish. It, it digs in deeper, it holds better. So that eye is upturned to maximize the bite, but by having an upturned eye, we can still make the wraps with our leader around the shank and get that direct, you know, in line with the shank pull when we set the hook. Octopus hooks also tend to have a, a, a pretty short shank, um, just a little bit longer than the actual hook point. A lot of bite, not much shank, and they're usually very light wire. So that's what I use when I'm using floating baits like power bait or even if I'm floating a worm. This is the type of hook you'd use on, on some kokanee gear when you're when you're rigging up with the double hooks um, and octopus hook. Again, that's characterized with the short shank, the upturned eye, and that, that wide bite. So, you know, you can get a good purchase on your hook in a fish's mouth, even when you're using a very small, very lightweight hook. Final hook I'm gonna talk about, and this is one people haven't seen a lot of, but I find it very useful. This is my Mustad number four bronze ring eye hook. You can see that eye right there is in line with the shank. It's got a good size eye on it. And uh, I use these for various things. I use these with soft plastics a lot, like my Trout Tricks worms, my trigger minnows. I'll use them for trolling night crawlers too. You can take a pliers, you can kink the the uh, shank in them to make a small piece of worm rotate through the water. I also like to open up the eye on those, slide them over the, um, the hook on a fly, 
and use this to make a stinger hook. Then I bend it back shut. I think I might have one of those in my box here. If I do, I'll grab that and show it to you. But anyway, that is a number four bronze Mustad ring eye hook. And uh, it's very versatile. And because it's bronze, it's not really, you know, tempered real hard. I can bend it. I can bend them back into shape. I can do things. I can bend the eye open. And uh, I could just kind of kind of bend it to suit my needs and I can rebend it into shape if I have a hard time getting it out of a fish's mouth. This fish holds, ex or this hook rather, holds fish extremely well. Sometimes um, when we're trolling the trout tricks, I'll have a hard time getting this hook out of the fish's mouth and the hook gets all bent up because it holds so well. Let me see if I've got a fly where I'm using one of these as a stinger. I'll be right back. Okay, here's a, uh, there's a pink and white metal head I was using this week. In fact, I, I took it off the leader. It's still got the action disc on there. But if we look back here, here, here's the hook that comes with the fly right there. If we get back into the tail here, we will see what the best way. There we go. There we go. We will see that I've taken one of those ring eye hooks and I've added it to the, uh, the original hook by opening up that eye. I slip it going to be hard for you to see but I'll hold it up here anyway I slip it over the original hook on the fly I think that's pretty good and I get it past the barb and then I squeeze that eye back shut and it can't get off but what it does is it gives me a hook point at the very back of that fly so when fish come nipping at that fly it turns them from from being window shoppers into customers it puts them in the box so a lot of times when you're trolling flies the fish aren't super aggressive they'll come in and they'll just nip at the end of that tail and uh, that stinger hook, that extension, really helps putting fish into the box. So that's it. That's the hook basics for trout fishing. Those are the hooks that I use most often. Um, those are the trolling hooks that I use really often. Um, number one hook for me when I'm trolling is definitely the slow death, but those must add bronze ring eyes, they're very important to what I'm doing too with the soft plastics, using them for stinger hooks and stuff like that. So anyway, I hope that clears up things for some of you guys out there in YouTube land, some of you trout fishermen out there. Hooks, they're tools, they're like any other tool. You've got to use them correctly treat them right they'll treat you right use them for their intended job and they're going to make your life out on the water a whole lot easier if you're looking for trout gear you know where to go get on over to fishhuntshoot.com you can also book a fishing trip with me over there and we can talk fishing all day long as we reel in trout at collins lake i'm kel kellogg you have a great day and i'll catch you next time right here on youtube guys thanks for all the support <laughs>